my name is The Clever Fool. Hopefully the mic issue that I've been running into where sometimes the louder audio causes like a staticky noise to be made uh, is fixed. Um, I'm kind of using this episode as a bit of a test. Unfortunately, I did record a good number of episodes. I think all of Edward Longshanks, all of Bayanong, and about half of the historical battles before I realized this problem. So I'm very sorry if uh, this causes massive issues. I will try to fix the sound issues, but because it doesn't show up in all of the commentary, I'm not sure how much I'm able to do about it short of re-recording those episodes. And truthfully speaking, I may just, I may not have the time or desire to go back. Um, so hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much, but if enough people cause a stir about it, then I will consider going back. But we're just doing these videos for fun anyway, so hopefully that didn't detract from the quality too much, and I do apologize for doing so. Anyway, we are here with a custom set of campaigns called Kings of West Africa. The first one titled Tenka Menin in 1076. Uh, these custom campaigns I heard are quite good, and I do believe that other YouTubers have playthroughs of these game, uh, these campaigns out on YouTube already. So I figured, hey, you know, I'm close to finishing the official ones. I might as well get some more custom ones in there as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. You have not heard of our kings, how they carved empires from the desert sands and the jungle depths, how they ruled cities of artists and scholars and built wonders that awed the Arabs and Portuguese. Ha ha! You think we were born with these chains the men of Europe put on us? Sit. Listen. I have much to teach you. Before Europe had awoken from its dark age, proud warrior kings called Ghanas ruled the desert kingdom of Wagadu. This land was well known to the Arabs who journeyed to Kumbi Sela to wonder at the Ghanas court, where gold was so abundant that the king's sons plated their hair with it. These learned travelers returned to Baghdad and Cordoba to write books of the wealth and sophistication of Wagadu and their king, her king, the wise Tankamenin. But scholars were not the only ones drawn by Wagadu's riches. For decades, fanatics calling themselves the Almoravids spread like a sandstorm across distant Andalusia. There, tales of Wagadu reached the ears of Abu Bakr ibn Umar, the once warlord of the Almoravids who had lost his empire to a rival, Yusuf ibn Tashfin. Abu Bakr marched an army south across the desert to steal a kingdom of his own. What could Tenkamenin do against such an army? His people were scholars and merchants, craftsmen and herders. With the land burned by the invaders, Kumbi Saleh was an oasis soon to be swallowed by the Almoravid sandstorm. To resist would mean utter destruction. The only hope for Tenkamenin's people or his civilization was to take refuge in the east. Great Ghana, a family is ready for the journey east, but our enemies control the deserts around the city. We must escort our people to safety while preparing the city's defenses. Alright, so uh, I just started off some technologies there. Um, I guess I shouldn't have done that because I might need to restart later. But our main objectives are to bring 20 villagers east to safety in Timbuktu and that the Wagadu town center must not be destroyed. Our hints tell us that we have a population limit of 200 and are restricted to the castle age. Our ally in green trains villagers at the town center. Once five units are trained, they will change ownership to you. The villagers can be used to repair and construct defenses, but remember that your objective is to get them safely to Timbuktu. The journey to Timbuktu is short, but the path is filled with Almoravid warriors. Every group of villagers you send should be protected by soldiers. On standard and moderate difficulties, you will receive a small amount of resources for every five villagers that reaches Timbuktu. Although the Almoravids will not focus their attacks on your city at first, over time they will become powerful enough to destroy your defenses. Your scouts report that Tenkamenin defends his capital, Kubi Saleh, against the Almoravids. 
The countryside is in ruins, and tax collection has ceased. Taken Menon will have to rely on his finite treasury to equip his army. He needs to buy enough time for the refugees to escape east to Timbuktu. The Almoravids, in blue, control the deserts around the city with cavalry and camelry. They are opportunistic raiders who would sooner attack fleeing refugees than challenge Klimbisale directly. In time, however, their attacks on the city will grow in power and intensity. Alright, this is a pretty difficult mission, make no mistake. I'm going to try a bit of an unconventional strat here where I attribute 800 food to Wagadu. Bring my onagers to the right side, maybe nails actually. Upgrade to crossbowmen. And start training a bunch of camel riders. So the main idea here is I'm going to use the siege towers as a bit of an escort for the villagers and escort the villagers using camels. Okay, and what's going to happen is that these camels are going to escort the first set of 10 villagers over. And they're actually going to bait these cavalry over. In towards the castle. Okay, and since this is a bunch of genitors here, we'll actually be Okay, so that's one squad of 10 villages out. I'd like to get the next squad out as quick as possible. I'm going to delete this gate to see if that baits the AI into coming in. Okay, 
Looks like it is. Here we gotta get the hell out of Dodge while we can. This way, please. Avoid the onagers. Okay, and keep moving forward here. Keep moving forward. We just gotta make it over. I swear, if it comes down to this one light cavalry killing us, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Run! No! Oh, so close. We're short like three villagers there. I'm not so certain how we're going to be able to do anything now. I think I can create one more siege tower. Okay. It looks like we did successfully bait them into doing something here. Oh, that is a bunch of monitors. Let's get out. I can only pray that they didn't see me. Oh, please. Oh my god, that's a lot of monitors. Yeah, we definitely weren't meant to survive to the third wave. Now I have to hope that our TC doesn't actually come down. Because we need to live so that the TC doesn't go down. They just posted a few genitors over here. Come on, Siege Towers, come on. Walk in, villagers. That's three vills. Just gotta make sure that I'm not defeated. I think that might be it. Nice. Wagadu may be lost, but our people are saved. Those who escape will always honor us who die today in this city. Oh. We managed to actually live here. Yeah, if you don't get out by the third wave or so, you are finished. Siege Towers actually playing an MVP role in this mission. Wow. 
Um, the important thing is to just spend the resources that you have. This is less of a conventional mission and more similar to uh, something like a puzzle almost. The limited resources, you're not going to have any opportunity to gather anymore. Like the villagers could chop wood and repair stuff, but it's really not uh, much use whatsoever. You, you saw all these onagers. Um, you're not meant to be able to hold off their waves at all. These are Imperial Age armies, and you're meant to just buy time and sneak uh, sneak past to escape. So it's pretty fun, actually. It was interesting to solve it. Um, I think contributing the food to make the TCs produce faster was pretty much a necessity. I don't see how else you'd be able to finish this mission. Um, you got to leverage the production time and the research time of your blacksmith university uh, archery range and stable very, very well. And you got to use the resources that you were given at the start very, very well. The Almoravids sacked Kumbi Saleh, but did not remain long in the Ghana's lands. Though the Ghanas would not rise again, their ancient capital remained a symbol for later conquerors, perhaps because of the memories of those who fled the Almoravids. Seven generations later, a Soso conqueror named Sumanguru Kante made Kumbi Saleh his capital. But his new empire did not last long. A Mandinka prince named Sundiata Keita defeated Sumanguru and built a greater empire over the lands once ruled by the Ghanas. But that, my friend, is a story for another day. Nice reference to the Sundiata campaign there. All right, so that was Tenka Menin, 1076. Uh, pretty fun overall, actually. Um, it's very unique compared to even all of the uh, main scenarios. I'd say the one that I can compare it most against is probably a Mountain Siege in the Vietnamese campaign, where you similarly have to escort some units to the east. Um, this one is significantly, it's like on a smaller scale, it's faster paced because you can't get any resources um, and you have a much harder time fighting your back against the opponents. They have a bunch of genitors like cavalry, camel archers, your soldiers really are not meant to last for very long. So you have to be very intelligent with how you go about them. I truthfully don't see how you could do this without using the siege towers. Uh, if you just have standard villagers, I think they'd probably inevitably, some of them would get picked off to, um, to the light cavalry and the genitors are just running around. The Siege Towers have really great pierce armor, so they're able to take a lot of hits from the Genitors while garrisoning the villagers inside and moving reasonably quickly. But one single Light Cavalry in the mix could totally screw things up. I had originally tried to get it in two waves of 10 villagers, but as you can see, we lost three villagers uh, because our Siege Tower died a little bit early. Fortunately for us, we were able to sneak one last batch of villagers out, um, and it ended up being pretty close both ways because our crossbowman gave his life uh, to keep those three villagers. So it was quite a climactic scenario. So it was a bunch of fun, um, well-designed, uh, satisfying to play. And yeah, that's all I got for now. Anyway, my name's been The Clever Fool. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.